Greetings, family, and welcome back to Raising the Vibe. Thank you so much for joining me today. As always, I ask that you subscribe to the channel, smash the like button for this video, and if you haven't already done so, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I drop a new video. So today, family, we're going to talk about politrix, or the, in other words, the uh, American political scene and how it's just a farce, how it's an illusion of choice, how the candidates on both sides of the uh, ticket are actually working for uh, the same elite that governs this country and indeed uh, most of the globe. And what I wanna highlight here today to underscore really uh, how much of a trick bag the U.S. political scene is, is the fact that all of the U.S. presidents are related to European royalty. In other words, they share the same bloodline. And in particular, there are two primary ancestors that they all descend from, those being King John, who ruled in England and signed the Magna Carta in 1215, and also Charlemagne, who was a really brutal um, eighth century king in France, and then um, was uh, the emperor of Rome. So Even though ostensibly America declared its independence from the British and you know Europeans uh, in 1776, when we look back at the political scene, we see that all of these presidents descend from European royalty. So first off, if you're not descended from European royalty, the presidency is not an option for you. Despite the American dream and all of those other sayings that anyone in this country can grow up to be president, yeah, if you're descended from royal European bloodlines, and that includes Barack Obama, Donald Trump, and Joe Biden. I would, the question that I would ask is, what are the odds that every American president is going to be descended from European royalty? It's a setup as far as uh, I'm concerned. They're all really playing the same side. Um, several researchers who have really dug into the genealogy suggest that in any United States presidential race, the candidate who has the most royal genes wins. So, for example, in the race with Biden against Trump, royal ties um, of Joe Biden's place him higher in the bloodline pecking order than Donald Trump. So the prediction was that Biden would win over Trump. And here we are in January of 2021, and we see that that indeed was true. But the significant thing to note in that regard is that either way, the bloodline wins. A lot of the research um, that has been done in this area has stemmed from Burke's peerage called the Aristocracy Bible, and which has traced or documented, rather, the genealogies of the United Kingdom and Ireland's titled and landed families. Um, these people from Burke's peerage have predicted the winner of the U.S. presidential election for the last couple centuries, and they're almost never wrong in two centuries. So um, it would appear that there may be something to this. 28 of the 46 United States presidents have been cousins to the sixth or the seventh degree at most. When we look at the connections that the presidents have to each other, we see that Bush and Obama were 11th cousins. And we also see that Obama and Dick Cheney were eighth cousins. So yes, black folks beloved Barack Obama is also a member of the bloodline. There are other connections as well. We see that George Bush Sr. and Franklin Roosevelt each had um, 15 cousins who served as president. Gerald Ford and William Taft are related to 14 presidents. 
Bush and Clinton are related through the House of Windsor, which is the current monarchy in Britain. Ronald Reagan also had royal bloodlines, as did Richard Nixon. As always, I want to keep the video short and sweet, so we're going to stop there, and we'll be revisiting politics from time to time, because there's certainly a lot more information uh, that I would like to cover in that area. For now, though, that is it, and I just want to thank you all for joining me. I hope you found the video informative. I also hope this video gives you something to think about uh, when you're thinking about how fervently you want to support various candidates, how much of your attention and energy you actually want to put into the U.S. presidential elections. I am not saying that you should not participate at all. I am well aware of the sacrifices that our ancestors made. I personally choose not to be distracted by something that I don't think offers the solutions to the problems that are facing Black folks in this country. But each of us has a choice to make. I hope you got some food for thought and some inspiration to do further research on your own. Thank you again for joining, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Peace and love, family. Love and light.